How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have the burden with us again for the second time, and they can say their names, what they do in the band. I don't know why we're doing this, but it was great. Uh, my name's Jake. I sing and play guitar in the burden. My name's Rob. I scream and play guitar in the burden. <laughs> my name's Devin. I play drums in the burden. <laughs> my name's Ross, and I play bass. <laughs> Don't I like mind how you, the quarantine I lo- leg. I love how you guys are all like patiently waiting for somebody else to answer, and I just love. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. Oh man, you guys. We're Canadians, are, we're just, okay? We're, we're just polite. so polite. You're so polite. I like it. Yeah, um, can't talk over each other. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, you were talking. Oh, okay. you're. Oh, I was talking. Go no. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 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 Anyway, I'd the hold first the, door if I could. <laughs> the first thing, guys, obviously it's been a while. We were talking about how long it's been since the last time we chatted, and I have to say, you guys are still top five funniest interviews I've ever had on the channel. Not because you guys oh are on God. here, but that was I like went and rewatched it, the first interview, <laughs> and I was crying. Like I was just was like, this is so, this was so oh stupid. God. So if you can manage to top the stupidity of the first one, I'll oh, be. Oh, let me I, tell you. Let's do it, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> anyway, go, boys. so it's been a while. Um, uh, been a you while. guys, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, you obviously have released a new record, uh, which you know, slight plug, did a review of it, just saying, you know, if you want to watch it. Um, but you know, if you had a Spoiler, lot of change, he hates it. I yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Why did it break it to him, Jake? You know. I I gotta ruin your videos before they start. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but tell the people, you know, what's been going on since that time frame. Like I said, you released a new record. You did. I don't know if you did any touring with it yet. Obviously, we're in uh Barona virus zone right now. So uh, you know, <laughs> that's always. Oh wow. Excuse me. Excuse you, buddy. Sorry, I'm Jake. Sorry. I'm giving all y'all the the Rona. <laughs> We're isolation. <laughs> but uh tell the people what's been going on. What's uh what's been happening? Um I don't know, I'll go, man. So we spent all of last year and then some doing <laughs> Sink and Feeling, our new record. Um it's doing really well, which makes us happy, obviously. As far as things go, like we put out our EP just over two years ago, Presence of Past Tense, and that did pretty well, all things considered for us. Like we hit like 3,000 monthly listeners. So there you go. I remember going into releasing this record. We were all like, honestly, if we can just hit that, we're happy. Like, and we capped at like 22,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. So we're like shocked on just the reception of the record. Like, it took so long to do. So like, by the time we finally put it out, we're like, I mean, we still love the songs. So don't get me wrong, but we're like, holy shit, it's finally out. And I think we started demoing people them. actually cared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We started demoing them in like November twenty eighteen. Oh wow. No, Some half the songs yeah. half the songs I'd say a good half, hey guys. Um were yeah. like reco- like pretty much demoed and ready to like start being recorded before Presence of Past Tense came out. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well present Presence of Past Tense actually came out of right yeah. before this album. <clears throat> we yeah. originally we originally started working with Jordan, uh, Jordan Chase, our producer, and started writing a bunch of songs and demoing them with him. And we kind of changed our track halfway through. I think we kind of talked about this too when yeah. we released Pop. But yeah, we kind of had a batch of songs and we're like, these are cool. And then we had more that we just felt were too different and we didn't feel like they all really meshed. So we're like, let's just put these ones out as an EP, and then yeah. and then we kept on, and then we kept on writing and kept on going and added more, and it, it, what for what eventually became sinking feeling. It's funny because like most of the songs that are on presence of past tense like were demoed before our first record, Modern Disease, came out. So like, oh, wow, so you were just yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think we released Modern Disease in June, and we like went into the studio and did demos for all of presence of past tense in January of that year oh of 2016. God. Yeah, so then, like, we started writing these new songs that became, like, pop, and then we had more songs, and we're like, ah, but these, like, we we still liked all the songs on Present to Past Tense, but we're like, ah, these new songs are better, we felt like, and then, (laughs) so we're like, but we don't want to just abandon the songs, so we made, like, the decision to just release um, Present to Past Tense out of the songs that we were gonna cut. So that's kind of like a B-side CP. It's funny because <laughs> yeah. we like all love it in, in retrospect, but like when we were recording it, we were like 100% done with those songs. It's like when you write yeah. a batch of songs 
and you were like really happy about them like a year before and now you've written like a bunch of other songs and you're like oh those songs suck now but then they took on new life and i'm happy we recorded them yeah this is the first time so we just started writing again this is the first time where like an album's out and now we're just writing songs <laughs> for, with no no oh these songs were before the album no 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 that. feeling all, killed us yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well that that's been part of it too has been we've kind of been laying low because well coronavirus now but um we've just been needing to chill i mean well, yeah since it we was... talked to you last time uh <laughs> devin got a girlfriend <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Uh, we didn't think broke up happen. with his girlfriend <laughs> yeah! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they got and back, they got back together with her Whoa, girlfriend yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Everyone, everyone started applauding ross is going through a divorce. My wife left him or he left her. Yeah. Um, My wife and I, well, yeah, there's been some, some rough stuff. My wife and I separated last year. Rob so. bought a house. So Rob bought a house. Have any money. And, and I'm buying, a house. buying uh, a house. And I got engaged. So we both yeah. had a, a life. You ever heard the term yeah. adult? I think some of us are trying that. Yeah. Not sure how it's going, but. Yeah, it's spoiler really, alert, it's, it's not going well. It's going great, guys. <laughs> so that's why we haven't written new songs yet because uh, yeah. we're busy. You know, yeah. um, doing adult stuff. You know, Ross is call. lost in the sound of separation, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. my God. Hey, we Ross is living his best we, life. Ross, um, so much shit has happened to him over the last year, obviously. If he, as you saw yeah. the ashes of his dog. <laughs> Um, it's been it's been rough it's been rough yeah i mean if you want to speak made, to that i mean yeah the, and not just to talk about oh look at how terrible my life has been it's more so that <laughs> honestly like over the last couple of years we've all dealt with some really rough stuff some cool things have happened but we've dealt with rough stuff and so mm -hmm. you know that to t actually talk about the album that was i think for a lot of us and me especially that was a huge a huge focal point it was mm -hmm. just like wow this everything sucks like the and for me the album was it was something to focus on as a positive and so you know going yeah. through the process of, of demoing and doing pre-production and then um you know spending the time tracking and then even even over you know after we finished tracking everything you know in the process of mixing and mastering you know jake and i spent countless hours actually working on pushing to market this thing and actually you know you know we're proud of it so we wanted to give you know actually give it you know the the release that we felt it deserved and so you know we all worked really hard to actually you know just like well we spent three years and a, a ton of money and time working on this thing just throw it out oh, yeah, there. We actually we actually <laughs> we actually wanted to make it have some sort of impact and so yeah, we spent sure. a lot of time on that too and so it was even just the even the time spent in the run-up to the release back in december was months of you know even though the 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 musical work was done it was it was months of you know discussing and planning how to how to market the thing actually building content and yeah all that kind of stuff so and yeah, like so it, much stuff has changed since we last released the record with how like music release works. Yeah. So we spent like damn months sitting mm -hmm. down. Like Ross and I would have band dates where we just both have our like computers, and I'd be working on video content, and he'd be working on like graphic design content to push the record. And like it was just, it's crazy how much things changed. But like we worked our damn asses off making sure that like the record didn't just get released and to like fall to deaf ears so we're really excited on how like the record's being received in that way um but it's yeah it's been it's been a weird long process for the whole thing yeah yeah, yeah. Since, since we did you know we did an album of course now nobody wants to do albums they want to do single single <laughs> single single and you know we're uh we're torn on that i don't really like that release schedule i'm still an album guy i get that maybe that's not feasible but yeah. uh you know i think we're gonna dabble our foot into that now because it's kind of the future yeah that might I, be the next thing i i mean i feel like a lot of bands because like you know you if you have eps you can get i mean feasibly you could get two eps out in a year you know like if you're really thinking about it like 
the one band that comes to mind that I know like always puts out music on a semi frequent basis. Um, Bill Murray, he does like an EP at the beginning of the year and he'll do one closer to the end of the year. And I feel like totally. for him, that's, you know, I feel like that works for him. Obviously, as like a Patreon and people get to listen to like other songs that, you know, weren't released. Uh, so I feel like a lot of his stuff is really well thought out and well put together. But I might just be like one of the older guys and I enjoy like the full length. I enjoy like listening to it front to back. The The process yeah. it takes for people to get into it because... I feel like, you know, a lot of the stuff now is like, you know, people want it immediately. They're like, they're probably, I assume that other people are like, you know, that message you, you're like, oh my God, when's the, like the next single coming out or whatever. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, I, I don't ask that cause I know how hard it is. And I actually just did like an <laughs> album campaign like uh, last month uh, or a few months ago with a b local band and I know how hard it is like I already knew how hard it was before but now I just know how hard it is to like get an album out for people to check it out for like reviewers to do reviews on it for people to do interviews all this stuff to talk about the record and there's I think there's a lot more of a process that goes into it than just to be like oh here's new music do it what you want um, yeah you know? unless you or have like a following pre the record like a good following yeah like bands like brand new years ago can just like panic release an album just like hey surprise it's here and, and people like eat that it can up. work yeah. but like being a local band and there's so many like good smaller bands i yeah. find right now like probably it's yeah. it's probably because the internet exists and like making quality recordings is like easier than ever at this point so well, like yeah, I mean, there's good a lot bad. of good sounding bands so you're like competing a lot yeah, I hate to say competing because obviously we want every band to like sure, get recognition, yeah. but like people's attention spans are just lower and lower. You know, like 20 years ago, we'd buy an album and listen to it front to back, and we'd listen to that album for months, like because yeah. you had to spend money, so you had to enjoy it either way. <laughs> yeah. And like the art of that's kind of dying. That's why we were like, we had a lot of people actually like hit us up and they're like, why aren't you like splitting up Sinking Feeling into like two EPs or something? And we're like, no, <laughs> because <laughs> we are music fans first and foremost. So like, I think when it came to like releasing a record, we're like, we know it's not the smart way to do it, but I'd rather release 13 songs that tell like a common theme and bridge a story together pretty much. But yeah, <laughs> it's if we, really if we weird. Didn't, sorry. If we didn't talk about it the last time, I don't really remember where we were two years ago, but uh, if it's not apparent, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Somewhere. laughs> Yeah. We're we're really not trying to make it. We're not trying to get signed. We're not trying to put just singles out because that's the smart thing to do. We're going to do that because that's what's feasible right now. We still sure. want to do albums because, like you said, we're music fans. And because we're not under the pressure of trying to make it, we can kind of do whatever we want, which is what we've been doing, especially lately. We're not under the pressure of album release, tour. Because you said tour. Have we toured? No. Are we going to? No, we're gonna play a couple shows a year because that's what we want to do. We all have jobs, houses. Like this is our favorite way of being in a band, is doing kind of whatever we want. Yeah, with no pressure. it was honestly we had the most like freeing band meeting I'd say about a year ago. We all like sat down and we all had like our individual like anxieties about the band, obviously because we all were on the kind of the same page of like, hey, we're all pretty happy in life. We all have like decent jobs. We all just want to like make music for people and make music we like with no pressure. I mean, theoretically, we've always been kind of the same pace where we'll go on weekend runs, we'll go on some longer runs a year, but like never a big, big tour. But like the fact that we realized that everyone was on the same page and it wasn't one or two people holding the band back from doing what they want, we wanted to do, like it was amazing because we all realized that, hey, we're all okay with the pace that we're on and that we don't have to uh, worry about the stresses of quitting our jobs and leaving town yeah. for months on at a time like it was really really free for sure and you know, i think it's more feasible than ever to be an internet band which is oh cool. yeah oh yeah definitely. except okay we released our album in december going back to what you said about like people being like when's new music and someone hit us up in january and they're like new album 2020 <laughs> like <laughs> like the album hasn't even been out a month dude and he's like oh i'll check it out <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> I know yeah. Ross is trying to say something, so 
Oh yeah, Russ, go ahead. Ross. Oh, I was it was I was just gonna kind of touch on, on exactly what Jake had talked about with the whole the whole era of being an internet band and it's I, he kind of said everything already, but it just it's 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 signal noise is what it comes down to, right? It's just yeah. there's so much to sift through. And even Jake just mentioning, yeah, about uh, the fan who reached out and you know, kind of was like, Oh, there's you already have a new album yeah. out. <laughs> like it's like your own fans can miss what you have going on oh, sometimes yeah. because there's just so much and and so it's just it's about trying to find a way to, you know, being successful at, at this. I'm, I'm, we're all really grateful that we've had the kind of success that we have had already sure, with, yeah. with the new album in such a short amount of time because, yeah, it's it's crazy that we, you know, we haven't put a ton of, um, we haven't put a ton of active, you know, money into marketing to, sure, to like, yeah you know, sell the album, you know, it's not like we have some massive marketing budget where we can, you know, advertise it like crazy. And a lot of the success and reach that we've had already with the record has been almost entirely organic, which is what really has blown our minds is that it's resonated with people in some way that is allowing that to continue. And that's, that's that cutting, being able to cut through the signal noise and actually in a small little corner of the niche of our our world of music and our genre that it's having an impact is is really special and we're all really grateful for it no i Touching feel like that too like devin oh, sorry, go ahead somebody somebody <laughs> shoot <laughs> no you go ahead man <laughs> no i was gonna say like even you know even before this like when we were in that kind of waiting period for like the next record uh i even felt like i was like they don't really – I've never felt like you guys are the band that were just like, oh, my God, I have to get – like, I have to push all this stuff out. I have to do all this stuff. Like, there wasn't – not to say there isn't motivation behind it because I feel like you guys are all very dedicated to, you know, the burden and stuff like that. But I felt like yeah. your type of music was like, you know, even like finding out about your band initially. Like, I had found out about you guys through, I think, another, like, Canadian band. Um, and so I was like, these guys weren't really, like, trying to just be like, hey we're out here like we're constantly like in your face about like different things like we're releasing a new album or releasing a new single or releasing a new ep it was just like if you found out about us like that's cool please check it out like you know and that's the way it goes and like you know all that stuff but i felt like your stuff was like really kind of for me like an underground gem because it was like this <laughs> this is like something that was like you know very nostalgic to me like I grew up listening to like Under Oath and stuff like that. And I know that you guys pull a lot of influence from them. And so yeah. for me, it was like cool to find that because I feel like a lot of times, like you're saying, when you're a band that's on the internet or have a large internet following, you know, there's, it's easier for you to find out about stuff and it's harder for people to find those real, like, you know, uncut, like people in the industry that like have not too much of a following, but have like a decent following, but aren't like, biting for your attention that are like okay if you like our music you're gonna like our music you're gonna stick around and if you're not then you know if you want share with people if not then it's not like that big of a deal it's like but we just want to put mix music out because we care about it first and from first and foremost and like we want to just put out something that's really good rather than just to just throw shit at the wall and just see what sticks and then just keep going at it until like we're like you know on the front page of like band camp or whatever you know so yeah a lot of your stuff to me feels like really organic and i feel like a lot of your fans from what i you know received in terms of like messages about like the newest album and stuff all felt like holy shit this band's sick because like you know i feel like a lot of people maybe outside of like the vancouver area really don't know too much about you so it's cool for me to have like some people that at least on my side of the world on the east coast we're like, holy shit, these guys are sick. Like, why, you know, why aren't they bigger? Why aren't they this or that? And I was like, well, that's like the whole point of doing. I feel feel like for me, that's the whole point of doing something like this is to find these like smaller bands that are really doing a great job, but obviously, you know, either have some reasoning behind it why they were just like, I don't want to just push a ton into marketing, and obviously, it costs money too, but just like you know to get bands out there that are really doing a great job that maybe you know don't have the you know full time or the full like amount of energy to be like 
oh my god there's so much shit going on like i have to post stuff on youtube i have to post stuff on all these social media platforms so i feel like for me it was a good thing to get out there for other people to check out your music and i know i definitely had like a good 10 messages of people being like this band's sick like i didn't even know they existed so i'm glad that they do exist so <laughs> that's that's so well, cool thanks, thanks for doing we, the work that we, you do, yeah, hell yeah, man. It helps yeah a lot. we appreciate it a lot and that's actually been the most surprising thing i think for all of us in this whole cycle is because of how organic we've kind of chosen to do it and mm -hmm. just let it be out there the the reach that it's had and the the geographic locations of where we've been getting a lot of support from has been wild um we've had we've had people from over in, in europe uk there's a couple of a couple of guys in russia that are just like have been messaging us and like sending us a lot of a lot of wonderful um words about the record and yeah it always surprises us because it's like we we don't operate outside of our really outside of our local local yeah. area we're really we're really tight and we're really close knit with the western canadian music scene and that's obviously where we play you know we haven't we haven't done a show past alberta you know so <laughs> as a Which, band yeah it's it's really crazy as a canadian band because in the states like i feel like you can do a tour within one state and like hit up a ton of different yeah. markets like even yeah. just in one state yeah. right so like any major city near us is about eight hours plus away. Mm -hmm. So it's funny when people are like, I'll see threads on like groups and stuff. Like what's the furthest you traveled to see a concert. <laughs> and like, if we want to see any like relevant band, it's like, it's, it's honestly like a trip. nine, eight to nine eight hour drive to Vancouver. Yeah. Like, well, a funny so... story about that too is like, yeah, you see people complain about, <laughs> Oh, I, you know, I have to drive three hours to go, go see this band. And then I see him like, say, I'm like 30 minutes. They're like, yeah. been like is my next about? door like, neighbor's venue. Like I've done. I drove, I drove down to, I drove down to Vancouver this summer to go see, um, uh, August Burns Red on their, Oof. on the Constellations anniversary tour. And it was like a nine hour drive Oof. and Silent Planet was opening for them on that tour we and, all the time. Yeah. And it's normal <laughs> for us, but it's funny. Cause like I tweeted, I tweeted at Garrett from silent planet because i was super excited to see the band i was just like hey just drove nine hours to come see you guys like i'm super stoked and garrett tweeted me back instantly he was like come find me after the show and just gave me like the biggest the biggest hug because he was so stoked that yeah you know that someone would do that and it, it seemed very like very strange to him and it yeah. was just like for 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 us it's like yeah we just it's what we have to do it's it's gonna be a Rob weekend road I, trip to go see a show rob and i like I think like three days prior, Rob, when we went and saw Emerosa and yes. yeah. So we went to Calgary, which is um, eight or nine hour drive. Plus nine. you lose an hour because it goes an hour ahead. Um, oh. like kind of, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so we decided like, I think the show was on a Saturday. We decided on like the Thursday. We're like, okay, let's go. And so we drove the Saturday, drove nine hours, saw the show, and then drove home the next day. And I've done that a couple of times. That's normal. Like, that's normal. I, drove, normal. I went and saw Brand New that way. Um, most of us went to Seattle to see, like, Under Oath, Bear Tooth, and uh, Bring Me the Horizon. And, like, I think we drove to Van one day, which is nine hours there. Then it's, like, two and a half to Seattle the next day. And then I drove, I think we all did, drove, like, straight home to Prince George the next day, like, where we're yeah. from. And that's like an 11, 12 hour drive, like together. Yeah, it's yeah, when, yes. when Jake said we're music fans, he's not kidding because that's yeah, what we like, do to see bands. First yeah. and foremost, like, like we don't care about being. We're, we're honestly we're writing music for ourselves. Um, I don't think we've ever like compromised. We never write a song being like, we need another single for the album. Like, sure, we'll like say like, oh, we want to write a song kind of more in this vein, um, and we'll like use a song for for reference. But like, we never are like, oh shit, like we need we need two more songs on the record to to push that are more accessible for people like if we want to make like a straight up hardcore song we're gonna do that yeah like we always want to keep balance on our records and i think that's what is resonating with people like not to, to sound weird about it but like we always like make a conscious effort at least to be like let's do what we want like whatever yeah. like 2793 sounds nothing like static c on a record um like that's a hardcore song versus like a finger pick like acoustic type song so like i think that's important to us because as music listeners i, I want to be challenged when we listen to a record yeah. and i don't want like you know 10 12 songs of the same thing so 
I think that's what like we're music fans first and foremost. So we want to write music that we want to listen to. Really, and, and I don't know if other bands do it, but I definitely listened to our album hundreds of times when it came out because we're writing what we want to listen to. And I heard an interview recently where somebody said, "If you're not writing what you what you want to listen to, why are you doing music? Like, yeah. why would you make music that you don't want to listen to? Like, literally, our goal is to write the songs we want to hear the most, and that's it." That's that yeah, and you, and I, we and laughed I, when you said that we wrote a record that like under we wish under oath wrote <laughs> like um, it really because, is though i mean like, we didn't I, consciously I'm... do that but we were like i mean obviously we were pretty bummed about a race feed too like, <laughs> i mean <laughs> i feel like a I lot of people some good songs, i feel like a lot but, of people were that's like that's yeah <laughs> without question yeah yeah fair i mean like i think there's some like good moments on that record and everything but like we love that type of music and we come from like liking everything like r&b indie like yeah. just everything honestly like chaotic hardcore like <laughs> spazzy post hardcore like rob probably listens to like a shit ton of post malone and like then my chemical romance then like well ross listens to like deathcore and like heavy ass bands but then he'll also listen to like you know into shikari and like yeah, well, and, like, like that. and honestly like some of my favorite music is like post-rock like i just went and saw um caspian a and couple Quinn. months ago Shout out to with quinn, quinn. yeah yes, and quinn. it was like there <laughs> that like cigaros is one of my all-time favorite bands and it's it's just such a there's such a, a range and such a contrast of what we all listen to that it's it, i think it would be impossible for us to to write a, a collection of songs or, or a record that wasn't diverse just because of that alone like i don't yeah, yeah none of us none of us did. want to but none of us i don't think i don't think we have it in us because it's not like yeah. we're all hardcore kids that grew up in the hardcore scene so you know we all write just straight you know four four chugga chugga music you know just, we all we love that chugga chugga too, but... <laughs> gents, but like gents. i could definitely see us writing a song of that like not a yeah. problem and throwing it on an ep like i think no matter what we do though like it's gonna sound like the burden because yeah. like we can be like let's write a pop punk song and that was like vodka soda social club on a record yeah. it's kind of it like was. hey that's just more like a pop punky kind of song but then mm -hmm. like we feel like that but then i think translating on the record it still sounds like the burden it doesn't sound like you know uh post hardcore bands like hey we're a pop punk band now and we wrote a song like it doesn't sound like a knuckle puck song or a made a great song <laughs> you know <laughs> no so, i felt and i mean i truly stand by what i said about like uh, you know you wrote an under oath album that they wish that they wrote because it truly <laughs> felt it truly felt like that where it was just kind of like even with like older under -oath stuff it felt like they've always transcended their genre. It didn't feel like they were just sticking to like post hardcore. Like obviously they have their tracks that are like that, but you know, even some of the more popular tracks felt very like, you know, it has a little bit more of a breakup in terms of what they do. And so even with this record, I mean, I still listen to, I still listen to sinking feeling pretty often. And I'm just like, it kind of blows me away at how, you know, how the album translates from like when you listen to the first song, and then you get to the last song and it's like like you're Jake was saying, it's this like soft singing, finger pig, like a lot of reverb. It almost has like a little bit of like an electronic feel just because of the whole like way it was recorded and stuff. So, you know, I feel like the way that you guys have been able to kind of translate your sound, especially in this record, I feel like it was the most because I've listened to, you know, Modern Disease. I listened to uh, The Presence of Past Tense, but I felt like this one felt the most collective like it didn't like it felt like every song on the record had a reasoning and just like the way that it kind of arcs over like the whole album like you were saying you have like a track that's a little bit more pop punk you have tracks that are a little bit more you know pull from a little bit more of that melodic hardcore background and then you have like those softer songs that are kind of sprinkled in between there and it didn't feel like you know sometimes when I listen to like a hardcore record I get a little fatigued because it's just like how many more panic chords am I going to hear in the span of like two minutes? You know what I mean? And I'm yeah, not to dis and that's not to diss those bands because I mean, sure, there's like a ton They're of great awesome. bands yeah. that do that. But like at the same time, I feel like with a band, when I listen to a band and it, there's an album that I love, it's the reason why I love it is because there's just so much diversity to it. It's one that I can go back to and be like, you know, I can listen all the way through to it and I don't feel like, oh my God, this is like, you know, I don't know if I could go and listen to it again. Like I with the burden stuff like i'm just like i can listen to it from start to finish and not feel like 
holy shit, like, you know, I don't, Thanks, I can't man. listen to this again. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, that it means I appreciate that. I was going to say, just thinking about that too, it's, it's almost kind of like an apples and oranges kind of situation to compare because I, I agree with you um, when you say about like that, yeah, you know, you've got, you've got a really heavy band that, you know, it's, it's 10, 12 tracks of just go, 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 go the whole time. And like, that's great. And I, I love records like that too, but you're absolutely right that it's, it can be exhausting. And I'll find that I don't, and everybody's taste is different, but personally, yeah, sure. I, and a lot of us in the band, we all are kind of the same is that, you know, it is exhausting to listen to that. And I can't listen to something like that on repeat constantly. And it, I find like it, we're EPs very are better for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, five we're songs also, of that. yeah, five, five songs. And, and it's like, that. Yeah, that's great. Um, but I think part of the reason, you know, that's part of the reason why we kind of also do what we do is, is because it's, yeah, we do enjoy the journey of an album and an album that can be, you know, when we're listening to something, I like something that I can go right back and hit repeat on and play a game a second time through. So the fact that we achieved that with this record and it resonates with people, and especially with you, like, thank you. That that's awesome. And further to that. And I know, um, you know, we all spent, we're really picky about stuff like that. We, even after the record was, even before the record was fully done, even when we were still in the mixing and yeah. mastering production process, the, the final track listing that you see is, it wasn't just thrown together. That's something that we're all super picky about. And we, Jake and I, you know, and that was part of, you know, when Jake and I would spend time together, you know, working on other, other, you know, release path stuff, sure, we would yeah. be, we would we would sit there and we would shuffle the songs around and we would listen through and whether it would be listening through the whole album or like just listening to the tail end transitions of every song. We would collectively as a band, I don't know how many track lists, you know, ideas we came up with. Well, but I, I think we spent like two, three weeks going back and forth <laughs> yeah. talking about Yeah, honestly like twenty seven ninety three almost opened the record. Oh wow. yeah. And actually it's funny it's funny because Jordan, our producer, pushed us. He he yeah. was con he was convinced that that twenty seven ninety three should be the the album opener, and we we were <laughs> for the most part we were on board with that for quite a while, but um, it just ended up being that we originally it's funny when we wrote um, I didn't want to wake up it um, oh did we lose Brandon no we're good no, no. <laughs> I'm here I'm here um, when we even when we first demoed out and wrote. Um, I didn't want to wake up. We all kind of collectively felt like that it's opening that riff to that song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I was I was actually struggling to remember too. That's the other thing too, trying to remember. Side so note: we all we all is. just know the working titles, so like, <laughs> yeah. maybe we'll talk about that. If, if we accident if we accidentally yeah. mention a demo title and everybody's it's confused. funny that Vodka Soda Social Club wasn't the demo title for that song. <laughs> like that's the silly one that stuck. But um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, go go ahead, Russ. I was just say it's we were very we intentional about crafting the journey of the album that way because it's it's important to us and it's like you know it's yeah it's interesting because it's it's not only is it a musical <clears throat> it's balance but even just like lyrically and emotionally it's it's a yeah. journey too and so it's like you know yeah this song might really haul and it's great because when we can front load the record with a little bit more energy but and Jake was actually really good about that because I I tend to be that way I know I pushed for often a lot of times. I would push for, you know, front loading a couple more heavier songs at the beginning of the record because it was just like, you know, the energy. I, I would feel like you need to get the energy out and then the record can calm down. And Jake was really good about being like, no, we need to pace it a little bit more. And sometimes it would simply just be because like a certain song had a bit more emotional weight. And so it's like, let's backload that song. And, you know, it's like it's something that when people come to later on in the record, it really kind of resonates in a different way. And so we've, we we yeah, we've had we had hundreds of discussions and yeah, we literally spent weeks, <laughs> weeks trying to figure out, you know, the final arrangement of it. So See, that might be our favorite that's part. Yeah. Yeah. I think something that's like neat that like was kind of intentional was every release that we have. I mean, I guess old songs too. And old songs was like put together as like the three songs we released before we were like really serious as being a band. Actually, we're probably the most serious we were ever then. Because we actually care. <laughs> but like, um, we're gonna make every it, release we're gonna tour, we put we're out, gonna be big. Yeah, every um, <laughs> every release we put together, 
opens with like a droney intro. Like it doesn't kick straight into a song. Like initially we were like, let's break the cycle on that. Let's, uh, <laughs> we wanted to do like classic disaster to open. Like when we were starting with this, like let's just punch people in the face right off the get go. <laughs> and like, but I think that's cool. And I, I almost don't want to break out of it for future stuff because I think it starts the pacing on a journey because yeah. it's not just a boom. Like, and obviously like we front, we, I think the cool thing about the pacing with the record is I, I know a lot of music listeners, when you pick up a record um, and you're listening in order, a lot of people like stick to the first five songs or something. So I think like with the first five songs, we have enough variety there, um, yeah. but it still is like pretty energetic and punchy in the face. But then like the people who stick around till the end, there's still some like gems there. I hate like getting a record where like, you know, all their best songs are like the first three. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's so true. I think some of our favorite songs on the record are like right at the end of the record. I know yeah. like Rob, you're something borrowed, something blue is probably one of your faves. Hey, yeah. Second last song. Ugh. Have we, that, I don't know. That's what's so fun about post hardcore is like Devin is our pop punk resident in the band. He'll <laughs> listen to every pop punk band ever. None of us will like half of them because they're, I don't want to use the word generic, but oh. I also listen to lots. No, I listen to lots of <laughs> Devin, <hardcore> no. <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, so you're good? Oh, regular pop oh, bands, fight more. <laughs> but then I'll listen to crappy hardcore bands where every band's the same. <laughs> and Jake will listen to Chugga Chugga post hardcore where it's bad. But we love. Oh, I love. It, honestly, know? like this record cycle, I like <laughs> been listening to the Blood Brothers like a shit ton. And at first, it's like this is bad. But then I realized, like, that's the point. Like, it's just... <laughs> that's the point. I, 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 the thing is, is we all like music that makes you feel uncomfortable. I think if you, like, if you don't listen to anything that, like, challenges what you want to listen to, like, like there's so many bands that are now, like, my favorites that at first listen, I'm like, I don't like this at all. And now they're, like, one of my favorite bands. I think you need to challenge yourself to, to feel uncomfortable with what you're listening to. That's what I and love that, about post-hardcore is because yeah. it kind of, like forces you to be down with lots yeah. of things because yeah. traditionally post hardcore bands um just in in the sense of it all even think about like old from first to last and stuff like they had ballads they had like straight up more hardcore leaning songs yeah. and then they had like poppy ass songs and like as a music listener like you know you can't like really get into post hardcore i feel like being like strictly a top 10 one lane, billboard yeah. listener yeah because it challenges you too much it's not like you know, like people could listen to our single and be like, oh, this band is poppy and yeah. cool. And then like they listen to our record and there's like, like lowercase and capitals yeah. starts with just <laughs> like punch you in the face growls. So like <laughs> we're, we're always really conscious about like challenging ourselves and challenging like the listener. And that's no. what's nice about everybody listening to different stuff. Like Ross brings some bouncy tough guy hardcore you know Devin brings some of the pop punk Jake brings this really weird hardcore stuff and then I'll bring you know whatever I've been listening to yeah, yeah. That, let's be honest yeah <laughs> and and it just kind of all meshes into one somehow and that's what's nice about post hardcore is it is all of those genres in one yeah and we can it do allows all of them you can do, do whatever it. Yeah. you want yeah. Yeah. yeah it's also weird like the juxtapose of that is like being in this genre like we're either way too heavy for a bill or the wussiest band on the bill. So like yeah. there is a trade off of it. Like we've played like metal festivals where like we tried to act heavier than we were, <laughs> which I think we did. <laughs> like up our screams, up all that shit, and like people still hated it. So like <laughs> it, that's the it's the weird thing about playing in this genre. But creatively, it's like one of the most freeing because I think yeah. whatever we do, it'll still sound like the burden and it'll still sound like a post hardcore record. Awesome, guys. Well, the next question is, uh, what was one track that like changed the most over the time frame, and then what was your what was your what was your favorite oh track off the record? Because I feel like some of you kind of talked about it, but I'd like to get like a clear, concrete answer. Because you know, here at oh, Audio Addiction, we get those answers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Should we go one by one? Get yeah, one by one. Answers. Okay. Whoever yeah. wants to start, I gotta think a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'll go first. We have a track. Do, I, okay, do we have a track? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. I've got one. I've got one right here, boys. Here you go. Uh, what's our album? I don't know what technology. 
Yeah, and we're like, we're still like trying to remember what the song titles are too. Yeah. Okay. Remember when we're I'll, in that I'll band? Go, like, well, let's, let's tackle, I can give wait, you a list of the oldest songs. Yeah, because we're we're so broken oh yeah, compass. how about let's let's talk about because those are the ones that definitely changed the most. Yeah, because uh, yeah. Broken Compass Asia. came before <laughs> Presence of Past Tense. Like we wrote oh, that wow. before. Same with Classic Disaster. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Something oh, Borrowed, geez. Something Blue. Those songs were before yeah. Presence of Past Literally, Tense came out. So after Modern Disease came out, Devin quit for a period of time because he moved away. Um, those songs were started. We started writing those songs with another drummer. Like, so like, <laughs> it changes the whole dynamic of blue. everything, right? Yeah. Something borrowed, something blue was like, I think probably like May twenty seventeen around then. Or wait, I don't know. A lot of the that stuff was uh, we started demoing it like when we started working with our producer Jordan. Yeah. Um, I think it didn't really change a ton too. Like that this is like one that we worked on forever and just, it, it took so long to get the song together. One of the earliest ideas was for, I didn't want to wake up, which we called coffee dog <laughs> because you know what? It's funny. <laughs> uh, our producer Jordan was live streaming the other night and he told the story about this. Rob, no, Dougie bought he? his old, D- 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 Dougie <laughs> bought his old TV stand. Shout out to Dougie from Cloaker and Stasis. Uh, he bought Jordan's old TV stand and it still has coffee stains on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Rob's like, we're, we're going to see our producer for like, and hang out at his place, work on like vocal demoing for presence of past tense. And we were, we had the idea for coffee dog, but it became coffee dog <laughs> out of a different song we were working on. And uh, so Rob shows up and he just bought a fucking coffee and he held it by the lid like this. And he went to hug Jordan, and the lid just like stayed in his hand, and the cup dropped. And he's like, "Holy shit, I'm so sorry." Whatever. He cleans it up, and like we hear Jordan's girlfriend, Megan, just yell, "Jordan, why the fuck is the dog wet?" So <laughs> he got coffee all over. It. But like, Kate, okay, this was March 2017 that we were working on, like that intro lead leading into the the song that yeah. um and we were just like trying to write that song for i think it finally came together probably like last january so like that was one of the last it, it songs was, we finished it was, writing oh, i was gonna say yeah that was one of the the last ones in pre-production that it was like one of the together. earliest ideas but last song so like yeah. that one theoretically like we have the base for the intro um so I guess it changed a lot because yeah. it was originally part of like a really hardcore song and it was a lead in one of the choruses yeah, that like got scrapped. Yeah. The other it one was scrapped the whole song and took stuff yeah. from it. That's so weird. I forgot yeah. about that. And then yeah. the other one that kind of probably went through the most iterations to get where it was was um synesthesia. Oh, oh my god. Well, Devin <laughs> wanted to kill me. Devin's like okay, back oh away, I want to shut up my coworker. Say Devin, because... you got some you got some shit to say, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> so for for context, uh even now my drums are at Rob's place, which is where we practice and where we write everything. Yeah, that's um, our, our jam space. So there used to be real whenever, drums there, but Yeah. Whenever yeah, I practice uh away from there, I I like I use my desk or lap or pillows or whatever. So to practice these songs that we were writing, it, it was tough to show up to jam and they said, okay, so Synesthesia, we're going to do this now instead. And I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. You go back <laughs> next funny, week. Okay, it's actually, like the... we're going to do this. I'd be like, okay. It was literally the shortest like, song and... on the album and it took the most amount of like reiterations. Yeah. And I think like, it was, oh, there was a month straight. straight. And yeah, it was there literally was a month it, straight and... where it changed Devin's... every week. Yeah, Devin's not <laughs> kidding because we, we jammed, we were jamming and writing like about tw- <laughs> at least twice a week. At least once a week, if not twice a week. And so, yeah, it would be like, we'd figure something out and leave and then come back. And in the meantime, we'd been like, let's do this instead. See, the tough thing (laughs) about the way we write, though, is like, when we're writing, it's us four playing instruments. Like, I honestly don't even, like, think about the vocals until we're, like, pre-proing and demo. Like, once we have an instrumental put together. So then that can, like, change songs because we're like, holy shit, like, you know, this hook is cool, like, if we extended this part. But we don't think about that when we're writing. We just want to write a dope <laughs> instrumental. Mm-hmm. So synesthesia was like that. Like the more I thought about what I wanted to do vocally with that song, like how we wanted to make it move, because you know it starts off as pretty high energy and like droney. I don't know. It's kind of like it's got like a dreamy vibe, which I like. It's kind of dreary. Um, once we kick into like the spoken word part, because it dips down again, and then yeah. it, you know 
goes full force at the end again. But then it just ends on like a somber note. So we're like, how do we want to tell that story? So we had like a bunch of different iterations. Like it was like, it was just going to start slow and ramp up or like, so we kept, we had the same parts, I think for the most part. Um, and it was just moving where they were in the length of them. But like, <laughs> I think like three forever. days before, three days before it came time to actually start recording drums, uh, Jake called me and was like, yeah, so uh, this feels like letting go, uh, synesthesia and sinking feeling. We're going to change these three parts. So just <laughs> so you're prepared. I'm like, <laughs> okay, Devin complains and he's like, oh yeah, it sucked. It was hard. But then we like show up to track drums and he legitimately recorded like, once we had everything set up, when we were doing drums, um, we did it in a shop next to uh, the place that Ross rents. It's attached to, like, a big garage for his land landlord. Um, so we set up, like, drums. We literally had a room, like, in a fucking garbage can and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they turned out really good, to be honest, like, considering, like, the janky setup that we had. But then, um, like, so we... we like Ross doesn't have good internet because he's in the middle of nowhere. To be honest, like, <laughs> I'm so honestly, I'm honestly back to my surprised house. that I haven't like completely Dropped. disappeared yet. Yes. Don't say yeah. it. You're gonna jinx it. Yeah. <laughs> so we um, so we tracked like I didn't want to wake up as like a starting point to see how the drums were sounding. We sent that to we drove to my house and sent the tracks to our producer to review really quick. Um, so that was like, we had that done by like about two o'clock and then Devin recorded the other 11 songs that have drums with them. We were done before five o'clock. So like less than three hours, he did the whole album. This feels like letting go was literally done in one take. And if you listen at the end, you can hear me saying what the fuck, because that's what (laughs) he did it in one take. And I yelled that because I was like, we were shocked that he did like, honestly, a near perfect take, like. He didn't have to go in and, and play anything else. Like, there was a couple yeah. songs he did in one take. Honestly, the hardest songs for him to record were probably, like, Synesthesia and The Call. Oh, no, feeling. feeling. Yeah, because, because y'all we never it. played them as a band either. <laughs> like, those were, those were songs that, like, really were worked on. They kind of came together in, recorded, in, while like, we were in tracking, Reaper, yeah. when we were pre proing But, yeah, like, we changed around guitar parts while we were tracking. Yeah. It was, like, so the funnest okay. part of it all. Yeah, that's that the Jake best. and I do that every time. We have the album written, and then we'll be <laughs> oh. like, "But we could, we this the structure yeah. never changes, but we'll do little techie, you know, harmonies add up things buried." Yeah, yeah. little riffs. like I didn't want to wake up. That's my favorite thing we did. I think was like I didn't want to wake up. That song had like a cool little second verse, but it didn't have that like riff that ding 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 ding, and then the ding 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 ding. <laughs> like we were like let's just shred for fun because Seosin does it and get away with it. <laughs> so and then like we put a straight up like deathcore like in that breakdown too like yeah we did it we did it as a joke while we were messing around with with tracking rob and we i did it completely as a joke when we tracked completely as a like, joke literally just like and they sent it to us over the drums <laughs> and they like guys to us. the guitar parts they sent it to us and we were all like we have to keep that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like the well, end a lot of the things that start as joke. Yeah. Just the nastiest like dissonant <laughs> notes. And <laughs> we're doing it as a joke to like, because we used to, you know, everybody loves stand up and scream asking Alexandra. And that's the whole album was that. And we did it kind of like, ha ha ha. And it ended up being the best part of the song. Also, <laughs> that's like, five seconds. Like, this is going to be really with, cheesy. Um, and it didn't work. Lapel yeah. David, that happened. The, the, yeah, that's the, the dissonant, it, yeah. the dissonant, note that lapel david ends on the guys we just we whenever we're playing and, and jamming we just do dumb stuff when we finish like <laughs> running through a song but we did that and yeah we we're like let's we cut to the it. clip yeah. we sent brandon yeah, the <laughs> other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's literally like us writing though that's like, the best yeah. Um, and like then we the don't fall- take ourselves seriously at all. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. I I feel like it. And then the second part, what was what, oh, yeah. what's each one of your favorite tracks off the record? That, that's easy for me. It's been the same since we wrote it. It's been the same for the whole album. I classic disaster for me for whatever reason, not because I scream on it. There's no reason. Has just always been number one. I've no, it's energetic, <laughs> but then we have those clean guitar parts, and it sounds like nothing we've ever done. And that one was fairly early on, and it's just like we've never done this and i don't think i've ever heard that song anywhere else like it just it's just so different i i feel we, like we played that song live at the presence of past tense release show so like yeah it's been that's how it's much been we out. loved it 
Yeah. Um, I don't know. You guys go first. I gotta think. So. Uh, <laughs> Ross, do you have one? Yeah. Um, go. my favorite is definitely Vodka Soda Social Club. Oof. Um. <laughs> hey, Ross. I know that song. The, guy, about the guys will say. The guys will say <laughs> oof just because there's. But it, that one for me just has a lot of that actually and. Until Jake did vocals, the I would say up until Jake did vocals, my favorite song was probably um, "This Feels Like Letting Go." Ooh, nice. Yeah. But after after Jake finished um, with with doing vocals with Vodka Social, the, I can't talk Vodka <laughs> Soda Social Club. That's a very sober sure. sad boy club. Yeah, very sober <laughs> sad boy club. Now. Um, <laughs> no, there's there's a lot of um, it's just very personal, basically. Um, just the way that that song finished off. Yeah, through the process of you know jake i like like the guys that touched on like i've I've dealt with a lot of really rough stuff over the last couple of years and jake basically took that song and lyrically channeled that all and that was a huge like i, <laughs> I actually remember like he sent me the lyrics and i just like sat in my car reading them crying because i was just like oh <laughs> damn dude. so yeah, yeah so, so there's yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of just very am i crying in the attachment. club right now and then there's yeah, a jake's, little, jake's not actually then, sad um, no he just and, channels and everybody else none of those sadness. none of those lyrics are about his fiance unless they're happy literally i know it's like i like, sound hey. like the saddest yeah. person <laughs> yeah you know. I, I mean i i definitely i mean we all struggle yes obviously, yeah. with anxiety and depression like i know i'm not <laughs> saying you're undermining me bobby <laughs> but like i tried to write lyrics for all of us on the album like yeah, i didn't sure. want to be like i'm gonna just write lyrics for my show <laughs> like i yeah. don't know ross was going through rough shit we were all were going through rough shit so i really wanted to like lyrically approach the record as like let's cover all the bases of what we're all going through and i tried to write metaphorically so like it actually like it's not like ross this happened to ross and and like really just reference <laughs> yeah. the situation <laughs> cut and dry like i like to live in the gray because yeah. i think that's the way to to really, I don't know, speak a message to allow people to fill in the blanks themselves to make it fit their situation. But like that song, yeah, is mostly really just that song was yeah the most probably the most literal of the whole bunch. Which yeah, and so it just really hit home. And then there's a couple of other things like again, um, the the name of the track we we came up with that as a demo title (laughs) because of a. (laughs) <laughs> very very poor decision that I made on tour last year. <laughs> Do you want to oh, talk boy. about that real quick? Yeah, you want to yeah, talk about like, that you guys, real quick? I'll, I'll share some fun okay. stories. Okay, can, can I can I bridge my perspective of this? <laughs> and then you can fill in the blanks. Yeah. Okay, so we're honestly probably one of the lamest fans. Like we go on tour yeah. with fans. We're like, let's fucking smoke some weed, crush some beers, and we're like. It's you guys want to pick up a like... six pack of craft beer and each have one and then go to bed? Like we're pretty boring. <laughs> if, but, uh... if, it, if a show is like gonna go past ten o'clock, we're all like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're super, we're super chill, we're super boring. So totally. anyway, we were, we were, we we did a, um, we played a show in Kelowna, Kelowna. The last, last. I lost spring. my voice at that show. Yeah, with a couple of, I... with with um. <laughs> Was that that was that was the Bloom and Ugly show, right? That was Fernandez. Yep. Yeah. So we yeah. played like really fun pack show. I had to play guitar because I lost my voice. Rob was uh, like I was just battling a cold. We played a show in Prince George, and then like I woke up the next day, hardly been able to hit a note. So I'm like, cool. <laughs> so like we had a bunch of homies. We had like Quinn from Living Machines, Kurt from Kitsune, like helping us out with vocals. It was bonkers. Really fun show. But then we end it. We're all so hungry. We're like. God damn. We go and get some pizza at this really dope place. Shout out to um, in Kelowna. And then we go to Quinn's place, like from Living Machines. We're all like just fucking tired. So like, it's late it's too. It was like, like 3 a.m. It was like 3 a.m. And yeah. we're all talking because um, it was just like a one-off show. We played PG, like our, our hometown. And we went to Kelowna and we were coming back the next day. So it's now 3 a.m. And we're like, what time do you guys want to get up, get ready to leave? We're like, Eight sounds good, so let's just get, like, some shut-eye and, like, yeah. So we're all going to bed. It's 8 o'clock. Ross is like, I'm just going to, you know, stay up a bit with Quinn, chat for a little bit, you know. So they got <laughs> those, Quinn like, walks to the fridge. Sodas, so pretty much, like, White Claw, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the claw was the law then, right? He oh, my gosh. So <laughs> Quinn, and I, Quinn and I collectively, we, we drank an entire case of nude sodas, and I think... And I think we also had a two six of uh, Fireball. Oh no, Jaeger! It was Jaeger. It was Jaeger. Yeah. So he um, 
they I just hear like a thud. I like I like open my eyes because I hear a thud. I check my watch and it's seven o'clock in the morning, and Ross is groaning. He's just sitting down to go to bed when our alarms are set for eight. And then so we wake up the next day. We're like, okay, let's get going, guys. We were out of like Quinn's place by nine. Ross like, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm still fine. Like, I'm good. And then just progressively nope. throughout the day, he just like gets so hungover. Because <laughs> we had to drive back to Prince George that day, and so yeah, it was like. I, nine hour drive. You know, <laughs> nine hour drive. So so obviously I had been just drinking with Quinn all night and so yeah, the morning rolls around and I'm still drunk <laughs> as hell. And yeah, so I have eventually over the course of the day sobered up, but then also got really hung over. <laughs> So, so he's like, song. yeah, no, guys, I'm feeling fine. I'm just so, <laughs> so like the song yeah, obviously Quinn, about Ross's Quinn, situation. Quinn literally, so. I'm we're halfway home and Quinn just texts me and he's like, "Hey, buddy," <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm just like, I hate you so much. And so oh, also, yeah, that's, who that's guest features the... on that song? Uh, so yeah, oh, Quinn, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, like, like, that's where the so that's where the demo is that title super meta out. or what? Yeah, yeah, that's where the demo title came out of. And yeah. it just because it turned into such like a, a fun, upbeat, pop punky feeling song, we just decided that that would be the song that we were going to keep the demo title for because it just all fit. And then, yeah, no, we ended up asking Quinn to. The demo title was Hugh, Hugh, Hugh. Oh, God. Oh, it, was. <laughs> it changed after that. Oh, Rob, it's right behind you. See those like colored lights? He bought a shit ton of those Philips Hue lights. So, like, when we were jamming. <laughs> He would sync it up with like some color changing shit, so like all through the room, like colors were just like, Woo! and he's like, <laughs> so then we like made the laugh of like, we were like referencing Hugh and like also laughing like fucking idiots, so we're, like, Hugh. <laughs> and then, so yeah, that's how our song titles come out. Like, yeah, yeah. we don't take no. anything seriously. Yeah, and no. then it turned into Vodka Soda Social Club because of that, and we're like, you know what? Let's get Fall Out Boy with it and do a stupid song title. <laughs> And then, yeah, like Rob said, we got super meta and we asked Quinn to do a part on it, so. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. always wanted Quinn on the record. And like, what's a better song to do than the one that literally references that night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So. And you got okay. a favorite? I don't yeah, actually know, Dev. so I'm curious Devin, to know. what's your favorite? Yeah, Devin, tell, oh, him. God. tell the people. Uh, yeah, my favorite, so I'm kind of torn. My favorite to listen to is Paler Shade, but my favorite to play is Classic Disaster for sure. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think classic disaster drum wise is one of the more different songs, uh, at least for me in my style. Uh, but paler shade, man, when it Oof. when it hits that, <laughs> that bridge and outro breakdown, whatever you want to call it, so oh, it hits so the good. Chef's kiss, baby. Yeah, you know what? Uh, fun fact: a, we were supposed to have Charles from Secret Whisper at the end of that. Literally up until like. Uh, that would have been he sick. was going yeah, to track, but here's the thing: is we could spend an entire podcast series on the conspiracy theory of how Charles isn't a real person; it doesn't yeah. exist. So we're just <laughs> going to let that lie. Joke. We're just going to let yeah. that lie. It's not a joke. Hopefully, we'll get him. he's not real. <laughs> it's not a joke. He's not real. <laughs> Fun fact: too, that's the inside joke. And um, he, uh, Kurt from Kitsune, our buddy, met up with. Um, met Charles finally because Charles is like an enigma he used to sing for Secret and Whisper <laughs> yes. and then he like fell off the face of the world so we're all like obviously Secret and Whisper fans so we've been wanting to get Charles on the track forever Kurt meets him and sends a picture with him and Charles uh, like Kurt from Kitsune and uh, Ross is like no not good enough where's his ID <laughs> so, oh, oh Devin no left. Devin's oh, god I know oh, Devin oh, thank god <laughs> It's like old. It's like old times. <laughs> Maybe Devin his phone got too hot. He said, "Oh God, Devin. okay, okay." Okay. So yeah, we almost had Charles on that, and I wish we did, but I still love how it turned out. Yeah. Um. Okay. I don't know what my favorite song is, but I'm gonna try to do it. It's just there's 13 songs to choose from, and they're all so different. So like. Listening, I really like listening to Synesthesia into um, lowercase and capitals because I love – we added a Bob Ross quote in there. <laughs> That's really sad. So um, listening-wise – oh, hi, Debbie. Oh, Devin's back. So weird. Oh, oh you're the big us. picture on mine now. Yeah. Yeah, you're Aww. the big, 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 the big, big picture. The only good-looking one. Oof. 
I think the song that came together really nicely though and like it was all through recording like honestly we played it as a band maybe once or twice before recording it it was kind of me and Rob just sat down and demoed the guitars and wrote the song as we were recording it, it was um uh sinking feeling I was trying to remember the song man <laughs> it's actually yeah sinking feeling um <laughs> I just think it's got a really cool slow build. Yeah. And uh, the way it really, like, it kind of has everything that we do in it other than obviously, like, a breakdown. But, like, it just ramps up, and I think it shows off. Devin's got some really cool nuanced parts in there. Uh, There's just cool things happening instrumentally all around, and I'm just proud of how that song turned out. Originally, I think Sinking Feeling had a breakdown at the end, didn't it? It did, because... Fun fact, we had The Call, The Void. The, those were two songs, the working titles for that and Lapel de Vide. So the, we were having like this like post-rock kind of like clean breakdown that followed the same pattern as the breakdown in Lapel de Vide, and then it was going to transition into that. And then they became just two totally different songs. So <laughs> There we go, guys. Next question. Keep Brennan, it, what's your favorite? My favorite? Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> I have to answer. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, to listen to and play. No, yeah, because <laughs> I can. Yeah, play, yes, I'm in. I'm in. I'm this. We I'm the secret uh, fifth member of the burden. Um, yeah. God, that's, that is awesome. tough. That is very tough. Uh, I have to say, currently, it's uh, 2173. That one gets me every fucking time. I love it. That one. I mean, as despite how like kind of like stripped back it is, every time I'm like. There's just something so like honest about that track that I was just like, that one gets me every time. Like I I enjoy it the most. Um, but if I had to go for like a heavier track, um, I have to do it with the one with uh, the word more boys. The I think it's lowercase yeah. lowercase capital. That Shut up, Widmore. Love those dudes. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> but I'd have to say that one. I if if I had to say a heavier track, I would probably say that one. That just because oh, all cool. the all those voices. Well, Oof. So John has a backlog it. of songs like 2793. Like, that's what Jake does. He listens to a lot of brand new, and he has tons of songs like that. So uh, there will always be those kind of songs for sure. Good to we hear. We promise you that. Thank Funny you. Fact, I, that was the last thing we really tracked for the record, and I did it in like my childhood bedroom. <laughs> and I finished it, and I was listening to like the last of the vocal track. Like I, I recorded it one night. And all of the power went out, like, province-wide, pretty much. Remember that yeah, big power outage, guys? All of oh, yeah. Really, all of Literally, I was there listening was to the last vocal failure. take, and it was just, everything went down. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of like a cool, like, ending to recording the record. Like, obviously, there's little touches here and there after that, but, like, that was the last major thing that was recorded for the record. So it's kind of funny how that happened. <laughs> That's awesome. That yeah, like for sure. Every time I I get like honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I first listened to it, got get the touch bit emotional. I was like, oof, I could feel that. I could feel the waterworks coming. I was oh. like, oh my god, this <laughs> one, that one hurt. Honestly, that, that one was called placeholder until we released it, pretty much, because that that was the joke that it was just like a placeholder title for the song. Mm-hmm. I demoed it when we were demoing Clouded for Presence Past It, and then um. We decided to put it on the record. It was supposed to be a bonus track initially, like kind of a hidden track at the end. Um, but then we're like, ah, it's the, we we all like, you know, like the song, so we're like, ah, <laughs> oh, we want it to be actually a part of the record. And then it was thrown around a bunch. And then literally, we were about to send the album out for like distribution, and I drove by our old jam space that was the basement of a church. That's where we recorded like Presence of Past Dance. And the address for it was 2793. And I thought that was cool to like close out a chapter of the band. So that's what that reference is. <laughs> there we go. Awesome, guys. The next question, keeping it more current, who have you guys been jamming to? What have you guys been listening to lately? <laughs> I know Rob's. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Callous Dow Boys. Ooh, and yeah. Only Callous Dow Boys. It's the best. I had so. I don't, our new song, <laughs> the. the the tentative title is Avant Barb. I don't know why, but because I call Callous Dow Boys Avant Garde Corps because they start talking about steak tartare in the middle of a song. It's and I wouldn't that, change Rob, it ever. And Ross Barbecuing. That's Ross Barbecuing. <laughs> the barbecue story. 
god. Yeah. That okay. That being said, so the the nastiest, weirdest hardcore band, and also the sales and self titled album, which I never liked until a couple weeks ago, and that will be my most played this year. I think I Under. didn't. I didn't like it. Jake always tried to make me listen to it. I, I love just that. didn't. I didn't get it, and now I get it. Love that. Uh, okay. Ah oh, damn. Um, you know what? I've been listening to the new Hot Mulligan record. Ooh, David, nice, nice, yeah. And the new Spanish Love Songs record. I think Ooh, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But then on like a heavier side, I've been listening to um, Dealer. Dealer's new EP is really cool. Yeah. Um, my mainstay right now, I'd say though, that I always keep coming back to is Blood Brothers. Um, like Burn Piano Island Burn is such a good record. <laughs> So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Ross um, and Devin. My top ones right now, and it's actually swiftly changing with the new Code Orange album coming out. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of that. But um, last last year, and especially over the winter, um, Sleep Token's record, Sundowning. Ooh, uh, yeah, that's right. probably been my most played record right. over the last little bit. Um, that and uh, the new Load album. Oof, you're right. You're yeah. right. Those are kind of my sort of big ones right now. Okay, Devin, what pop punk record are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, on track to be my most played is uh, Halsey's album, Manic. Ooh, oh, it's yes. awesome. Nice. Yep. Um, Good call. Yeah, so that's definitely, so good. definitely my top right now. Uh, but I do go back and forth to Dealer's EP, uh, The Death of Me by Polaris. Oof, yeah. Um, yeah. Like Jake said, the new Hot Mulligan album is a masterpiece. I really, I know Jake's not super into it, but I'm really into the new Silverstein record. Um, oh, I, I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then to, to bring it back to pop punk, Brain Pain, Four Years Strong. Ooh, you're you're right. Right. Man, yeah. You're right. How could I forget? How could I forget? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, the last two years for music have been insane. So it's like it really hard because like yeah. Devin will say like, even Silverstein, like I forgot, but like I love the singles on that record. I think yeah, like, it's it's interesting how they're changing, but still keeping good. Yeah. Like you know, like it is definitely a departure. But like, there's so many good records; it's hard to remember them. <laughs> yeah, Halsey's definitely my favorite, though. Four yeah, but can we just say, just so we know how terrible of a band we are? I found this out the other day. Burzum, I know it's backwards, has 170 thousand monthly listeners. We're nobody. <laughs> Burza has 170,000 monthly listeners because okay me and my buddies at work we'll put our headphones in we'll find really bad albums and press play at the same time and listen to them while we work in the shop <laughs> some, some black some black metal elitists are gonna come like fucking burn your oh, sure. yeah. that's probably pretty accurate actually so yeah. uh, very be careful. Gonna talk to you, bud. we're gonna keep an eye on Rob after this uh, from now going <laughs> further yeah. um Next question, guys. You know, I have to ask some of the fun ones. If you guys were to compile a musical supergroup, who'd be in your band? Ooh, is it a band we'd guys. listen to, or it would it be a band that were in the band? Here, here's a fun way to do it. How about we each have to pick the person that would be our role in replacement? The band? Yeah, I like that. Do that. Do that. Okay, I think that that's a smooth. Yeah. Okay, Jake, you go first. Vocalist. You know what? Like, it's not my most listened to vocalist but i think the most interesting vocalist in the scene would be jason butler for sure Ooh. he would replace yep. me yep. because he does it all he's got Schmoos. an amazing cleans his yells his screams it's great so smoothies yep. i like that who's next bobby oh all right bobby. Um, guitar i'm trying to hmm. again <laughs> this is kind of in jake's like not most listened not somebody I ever really followed, and if I'm being 100% honest, I'm drawing a blank on the name, and Jake is going to murder me. Uh, Here, I'll, I mean, I know exactly who it is. <laughs> oh, I remember. Uh, Frank Iero. And, uh, oh, my chem. Because yeah. Jake, yeah, because Jake showed me, you know, their music's pretty manic sometimes. But when you watch him live, it's kind of scary, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're we're a big, we're the biggest, you know, emo band ever, and here he is, you know, smashing his guitar and jumping off shit and hurting people. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> Even though they're not the craziest, heaviest band, you literally somehow pick, he's you the pretty, craziest guitar it's player. It's funny that both you and Jake picked the most manic people you possibly could. Like Jason <laughs> Butler. Okay, boys. 
<laughs> who else? Are you gonna are we gonna make chari- the chariot two point oh? Chariot that- basis. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this video side note of a chariot base cover, and the guy's just like grabs the base, and like a chariot funk starts, and he just throws the base into the <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. That's very accurate. I know it's pretty accurate. accurate. Okay, Ross. Um, I would honestly have to say Dustin Davidson from August Burns Red. Woo! I'm liking mm-hmm. this. I'm liking this. Add the tech. Yeah, because he's just, he's an, actually a songwriter and a guitar player, and I'm not. So. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, wah, who's, wah, on the bon- who's on the bongos? Yeah, dude. Uh, Luke Holland, for sure. Woo! That's, yeah, this, that's, this, that's, this, that's, that's an easy one. Or Mr. Ocean's in Alaska. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. Oh, Chris Turner. Yeah, you know, I was thinking Chris Turner, but Luke, Luke Holland for sure. Yeah, Luke's the best. Yeah. 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 That's I would line. actually, I would actually so, really love to see. Okay, who's our second guitarist? Yeah, who's, wait, wait, who's wait. the second guitarist? Yeah, 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 Brandon, that's your job. Oh, uh, it's my job. Oh yeah. God. Yeah, okay, I, I did just the vocalist. <laughs> okay, so so far we have the two most manic, the vocalist and guitar player, <laughs> and then you have two a techie. super techie professional, <laughs> and then Luke Holland, who just is way too super good techie for all the other yeah, yeah way too good for the other band members let me think, let me think. so this somehow is... we're the most hectic polished band yet <laughs> uh, let me think let me think oh man this is tough uh let's go with um i f- i want i don't want to butcher his name it's the guitar player for under oath i think it's tim timmy tim. timmy timmy i feel like that would be tight tim mctag tim yeah, mctag Dude, that actually also be crazy. Super okay, now who's the tambourine player? Oh. Oh. Uh, Stevie, Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Brandon. Stevie Nicks. Oh, let's not hear his name. Uh, Brandon Zagarski. Oh my god, I'm gonna get dots now. <laughs> Somebody's gonna find me out now. Uh, but anyway, next question, guys. Another fun one. Uh, if there was one album that you wished that you wrote, what album would it be? No man, like okay. Are we talking like That's so instrumental tough. wise, like what role we play kind of thing, or just in like as a whole? As a whole. Mm. Oh man, it's tough because I listen to so uh, much different music. Yeah, gosh. Oh. I mean, the the go to is Lost in the Sound of Separation. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I was literally just going to yeah. say Lost in the Sound. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if I could, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go in because that's one of my favorite records. <laughs> yeah, or, or all collectively new, agreed. Yeah. yeah, stuff like brand new stuff that just nobody else could ever write ever, yeah. and nobody will ever top. Like yeah. the Under Oath, brand new bands like that. Nobody will ever do that again. I know yeah. there's just so many like oh, man, classic yeah. bands that like dance, Gavin, dance yeah. too. And I know that even like we don't yes. do it as much anymore, but even in the first couple of years when we were doing what we do a lot of it was hey under oath has this part and you know we'd play it and like try and emulate it and stuff like that so i think you know just that probably sums it up best is yeah we're yeah, a we bunch pulled. of phonies <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're, all just, we're all just under oath wannabes uh, <laughs> honestly like yeah. writing though will be like oh let's write a song like this like or like yeah. i love this under oath part let's try to write something like this yeah and it probably sounds absolutely nothing like that like our first record we have a song called senses and that was the working title because it reminded us of the senses fail song and it sounds nothing <laughs> and it does not. <laughs> so oh my god that's awesome it's weird yeah and then the last thing guys the most important thing tell about the burden where they can find you at and uh anything coming up in the next couple months um okay. <laughs> jake you can find jake on our twitter it's, oh, yes, yeah, you, you, it's, it's not the band on the Twitter, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's all you Jake. We're very proud of it, though. <laughs> yeah. We look um, like fucking, what's that show, Hollywood Spurs? Or yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can find Rob at home. <laughs> yeah. 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 Being a dad, yeah. Yeah, if you can guess Rob's address, you'll find him at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And take him um, down for dissing Burzum. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Dude, we're okay, gonna get um, so much so hate. So, for real talk, you can find us on everything. I find us yeah, on Spotify. Uh, the burden, I think the burden band is our at, at the burden band is yeah. our tag on Twitter, Pretty much everything. everything, Facebook, Instagram. And our website is theburden.ca. Somehow yeah, we're they, able to get that, which is awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you want to pick up some merch, also Bandcamp. I think the Honestly, band U.S. dollar well. is so much better than Canadian right now. Yes. So. Yeah. You guys I know, so if you want to, if like, you, if you, if anybody is a U.S. fan and you want to actually get a really good deal you should <laughs> you should because i think everything is on is in canadian dollars so yes. Yes. you can you can pick up our album for like half the price because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> our dollar is in the toilet yeah, yeah. and, and rob so going and rob forward... is good about shipping merch now don't worry yeah. thank god yeah. i'm on point oh, and he's god. also coronavirus free so <laughs> you, can, you know you don't have to worry and off work it's like... oh man um, yeah, so upcoming, we're starting to work on new music, hopefully getting something out soon. We also have a treat in so, regards to Sinking Feeling that we're going to release in the next couple in months. In the next little bit here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There um, we go. Live-wise, unfortunately, nobody's playing shows as along with us. We yes. have uh, Actually, shows. we're playing a bunch of shows because we're uh, <laughs> irresponsible. <laughs> yeah. And we don't really care. We're so we're we're attacking going, Rob's play. basement. Yeah. yeah, the five shows we play a year, we're going to play right now. So. <laughs> During the height of the coronavirus, <laughs> if we yep. can, if we can make like live streaming work, maybe we'll do a live. Stream. Yeah, we, we've we've been yeah, talking about trying to live stream a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, Just see how that goes. Well, as long as it's not at Ross's house, because he has the shit internet. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, go check out the burden. I do want to say one thing because I know Rob mentioned it. Uh, that was hilarious. Like, so I yes. bought, so I bought merch for them, and I don't want to throw. Did Rob you buy or did we offer to send? Because we, I think no, we sent bought. you a bunch of stuff free. Yeah. Oh, was? Like, okay. Hey. So that's what. It, so that's so, what. It was. So they. So they. The last interview we did, which was like two years ago, they were like, "Oh, well, we're gonna send you a bunch of stuff for doing an interview," and I was like, "Dude, that's sick. You don't have to. I'll pay for it." And then they're you bought like, a, a shirt off our web store. Though. And I bought, and then yeah, I bought yeah, a shirt. Yeah. I bought a shirt. I remember that. And then you were just like, "We're just gonna send you a bunch of other stuff." So I was like, "Okay, sick." And so I was like, "It was like a week," and I'm just like, "Okay." I'm like, "It's fine if it doesn't come here. It's whatever." And then it turned into two weeks, and I'm just like, "Okay." I was like, "Our postal service is not that bad." So then it turned three Ours weeks. It turned into about a month, and then I wind up messaging the guys, and I was like. Hey, listen, you know, I like bought this shirt from your web store. Uh, did it get like lost in the mail or something? And then yeah. <laughs> the Rob's just like, oh, I was supposed to send it out. And I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, oh, so it hasn't even been sent. And then Ross and Jake were both like, we're sorry. Like, we don't even know what to tell you. We're just, we're just sorry. And then I think it got delayed even more because then Rob forgot again or something. Oh yeah, yep. and then I was just like, "Am I just not gonna get it? It's cool if I don't get it. Like, uh, I'll just, I'll just wait. It's just whatever I get, it, it's fine." And then I remember, I remember, uh, I went to like a doctor's appointment with my sister and my mom, and my mom's like, "Oh, you got this package?" And I was like, "From who?" I was like, "Where's it from?" And they're like, oh, "I was from Canada. Do you know anybody from Canada?" And I was like, "Yeah, I know some people from Canada." I was just like, "What does it say on the package?" And it says the burden on it, and I was just like. Oh shit! I was like, I got my package finally, and it was like three months later. <laughs> and I was just—I like, can tell you, the day we got our vinyl mailers was the day that the vinyl got shipped out this yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and we're shipping we're within the week of orders now, like because yeah. <laughs> we all have full time. We act- yeah, we actually are on top of our game now. That was one of the yeah. things that we yeah we that was great though because I we mean, well, at the time saying. we were just like not in the headspace we didn't have a merch store really we had just started it we didn't yeah but it was Learning just hilarious go. <laughs> it was just it was just hilarious that was probably hey, like i didn't it's care. bonded us forever I just bonded so, us forever yeah. and also i just thought it was hilarious and i didn't want to just throw rob under the bus because i'm sure you guys yeah. are way better at shipping now but yeah. i just thought that was to anybody watching this who has ordered yes currently, if you haven't gotten yeah. you will get it it's, been mailed out. it's not <laughs> i will throw rob under the bus he's <laughs> oh, yeah. the school bus yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> wearing all yellow <laughs> <laughs> I think Rob. I think Rob. Really? Actually, I think Rob actually wore pretty much the same outfit 
the last you like time, hat like two with years a B ago. on it? It stands for bacon. <laughs> yeah. Somebody Sports. made a logo like that for him. It's weird. Like, uh, yeah. I kind of like it. <laughs> I think, uh, no, I'm dead serious. I'm pretty sure Rob wore the same exact outfit last it, time. It would have been different yeah, colors, but it was probably a hoodie with plaid over it, because that's <laughs> all I wear. Yep. Well, on that note, go check out The Burden. <laughs> uh, their latest record, Sinking Feeling, is fantastic. It's the under oath you've always wanted, but not as shitty. Sorry. I don't, sorry, not sorry. I don't care. I'll call him out. Listen, you got to make a better record. But so uh, no hate. Still love it. I would say, in fact, if you made a record like the bonus tracks that you got from like the Target exclusive, we'd be good. But, you know, listen, you do what you want. That's the creative liberties you choose hey, to take. They're playing with Alice in Chains, up, so they're, they're playing with Alice in Chains. So who, they're playing. Who, yeah, they're actually making money. So they're, they're making one bank. Thing that no so. band from their scene does. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very yeah. true. So good for them. Okay. Well, good for them. One question for you. Brandon. Sure. Did we top the first interview? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we came in guns you did, blazing. You did. You did come in guns blazing. The dog, uh, the, the dog like, thing was a little much. Jokes. Oh we man! Had, uh, nah, that's normal. That better be in there. That better be how you start it, just as like a preview. I think we were. I think we were pretty. I think we were pretty close. I think you guys are on the same level of hyped as the last time. If not, I think that the whole Devin thing dropping out that was the best part because then it was just like he was like my phone was hot and I was just like oof. <laughs> Feels bad. Oh, <laughs> trick, man. Oh, definitely. Uh, Devin watches though. it. He'll see all the shit we said about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Most Just like all of us being like, you know, Devin's a really nice guy, and we would never say anything about him. <laughs> <laughs> we love and then, him. And then immediately yeah. as he leaves, you just like, yo, this guy sucks. But uh, <laughs> go check out the burden. Seriously, uh, one of the, my favorite, if not the the top Canadian brand that I love currently. Uh, no. go check them out. Seriously, the sinking feeling, chef's kiss, baby. Love that shit. You should go check it out if you haven't already. Um, if you enjoy this interview, make sure to share it, Ross. like, and subscribe. It means a lot. Oh, look, Ross, and uh, he's not going to do it. Um, I'm on the other cool. side. I'm, like, on the other side, but <laughs> Wait, just... I'm trying. <laughs> anyway, go check, out... not check... go check out. Go check out that. And we're just nope. we're not gonna get this to work. But go check out the burden. <laughs> and uh, thanks to all the guys for being with me in this Barona virus time. Bro, bro, no. All right, I self hate myself. Thanks so much, my dude. <laughs>